This is going to be the fun, really interesting section. We're going to go, and I'm going to be teaching the lucky seven points, 777, based on photographs that I asked you to bring. Now, for everyone in the audience, let me just make it very clear. I asked the live audience members to bring me photos they do not like. OK? Let me repeat. I asked them to bring me photos they do not like. This is not by any means their top work or their best work. This is photos that they feel that they're struggling with and they will like help with. OK? I'm going to be talking about all these seven, seven, seven points through these photographs. So this is where a lot of attention should probably be paid and notes and stuff like that, because it gets pretty heavy here. OK? Before I start, I'm going to go over some of these simple points. Because when, once I start talking about the photos, I want to start repeating these 777 elements, OK? Before I start, I also want to say, this is my interpretation of how I pose and how it has been successful for me. This is, after all, artwork, and it's open for interpretation. You can feel free to agree or disagree with me. I'm just giving you what has worked for me, OK? So I hope that's really, really clear. I by no means think this is like the way it should be. It's just really good stuff that has worked for me. When you're posing someone, and when you judge photos all over the world, I notice that the person's spinal cord is never straight or partially bent, which means that if you are posing, no matter if you're laying, sitting, or standing, keep eyes on that spinal cord. If they are at all like this, you got nothing. But if they are like this, you got everything. Does that make sense? Another thing is the color, uh, and I'll explain this later, that when you do have your couple or your groom or your senior portrait or whatever you're photographing, and you have them look down, have them look down with tilting the head, tilting the, fore, the foreground of the forehead, tilting it straight to the ground. So you're pivoting around the top spinal cord point. Do not by any means have your, you have like a short bride and you have a groom, don't go like, don't have the guy go like, if you hunch your back, it's over, okay? If you do have to have him look down, it has to be through a pivot of the, of the bone, of the, of the head. You, you pivot this way, not this way, okay? Um, so that's what I mean. Position head by tilting, not by slouching. Also, uh, if you want the energy to be mutual, you need to magnetize their heads towards each other. So if you have a boy and a girl, they magnetize their heads towards each other. Avoid, oh, this is a big one. Avoid 90 degree angles on the arms, on the wrists, and on the legs. You have a question? I was just going to ask what you mean by magnetize heads. So if you have a, if you have a boy and a girl, if their heads magnetize towards each other, it looks more believable that they're actually feeling something, love, whatever. If the girl is tilting towards her and the guy's kind of like yeah. tilting them away, there's some sort of negative energy going on, which could be a good thing. It doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing. You can create tension in a photo. But in, generally, in general speak terms, magnetize the heads towards each other. Avoid 90 degree angles on the arms, wrists, and legs. Now, why the heck did I choose 90 degrees? Exactly. Do you know why 90 degrees are so bad? Because when you're, trying to hold, when you're trying to hold up something or give something strength and structure, you use 90 degree angles. Like in architecture, you have the floor and then the columns create a 90 degree angle. When you're, fle when you're flexing for a, a muscle company or something, you do 90 degree angles. When you, when, when you do a lot of stuff that requires any kind of strength, you do 90 degree angles. How many times have you seen a pose that looks beautiful where the wrist of the person is like this? <laughs> right? 90 degree angle. Or the leg of the person is not, see, when I'm sitting, I look kind of like relaxed and chilled. But what if I was in a 90 degree angle? Does that look natural to you? <laughs> Does that make sense? And also the arms. And now, this is what brings us to the very big point. When, you're, when people pose, especially girls, they do this, right? This is getting really close to a 90 degree angle. So it looks like you're trying too hard, and you are, because it's a 90 degree angle. Turn it down a little bit, you fix everything. You can go up on a person. So if you have a, 
Can I bring the models out, please? <laughs> Matt and Kisia. Everybody. Master Kisia and Master Matt. <laughs> if you have models and they are, um, can I just move things around? Yeah. Here, get close. If you have this, 90 degree angle. Okay, 90 degree angle symbolizes strength and structure. It's not flawless, romantic, beautiful, delicate. Okay, all you have to do is change it to a sharper angle and you fix the problem. Okay, or you can do something like that, and that's a longer angle, you fix the problem. So, does that help a little bit? Avoid 90 degree angles. The wrist, if the wrist is like this, which happens when people get nervous, 90 degree angle, photo's ruined. Doesn't work, okay? So, um, thank you. Next one. Oh, you guys, I'm gonna need you like the whole time. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> come back. <laughs> Softened fingers. So you have your senior portrait, your fashion model, or your bride. It doesn't matter, this applies to everybody. And the fingers are, go like that. How does that look to you? Yeah. <laughs> does that look really cool? So a lot of times you have, um, just keep this up like that. Sometimes you have things where you, if you don't pay attention carefully to delicate parts of the, of the pose, you end up with a finger kind of sticking out by itself like that because people are nervous. Or the, the, there's 90 degree angles going on on the fingers, like they're, they're kind of bent in a 90 degree angle and it looks like you're about to claw them. See what I mean? All you have to do is soften them. Now, by using the word soften the fingers, you, your brain just like, releases all the tension out of them. If you say smooth out the fingers or something, it's kind of like, they are smooth, I put cream on. <laughs> See what I mean? So you want to be like soften the fingers. If there's any kind of tension and you say soften the fingers, just, it just softens up just like that. That makes sense? OK. Um, give the hands something to do. Let's pretend you have a pose and the bride is uh, standing like that. What are the hands doing? Nothing. Nothing. Now, right now she's standing in a cool, like she's shifting her body weight and all that, so obviously that looks nicer. But trust me, the arms just hanging down like this is not going to help your pose. So give your arms something to do. Put them somewhere. Sometimes I see them like together. and you just kill the love, there's nothing there. You know what I mean? But if you give the hand something to do, um, you automatically fix issues. So when you pose yourself, remember, hands have to be doing something, usually both of them, okay? Soften the fingers, and now, he's shorter than her in this case. Yeah. But, <laughs> but in normal tenses, can you, Go down a little bit, like more, a little more. <laughs> okay. If you were going to have her and him look down at her, don't go ahead and do it by slouching yourself. That's what people do sometimes. They, they try to go like this, they try to reach over to try to kiss her cheek or something. If you do it by t pivoting the point, so go ahead and pivot the head just down like this. See? Natural. And you still achieve the same look. The same look. Yeah. Okay? Um, okay, let me see what else here. Okay, origin of hands must be visible. If you have, I don't know where the camera is, right there. If you have this kind of thing, and you see the hand, but you don't see where the origin of the hand comes from, you just have a creepy hand kind of creeping, creeping at the guy's nose. Kind of like uh, one of those Adam weird movies, you know, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Yeah. So if you have a hand, Where is the origin of that hand? It doesn't, you don't know, right? But you can do this. You can grab the arm. Let me just borrow your arm for a second. If you do need to have the arm somewhere, try to show at least part of the wrist and a few inches of the arm. So you have, the arm is coming from somewhere, okay? Which reminds me of the next point. If the guy's wearing a black suit, let's pretend this is a black suit. Don't put the hand underneath the black suit, because now you have black, a creepy hand, 
and then black. So it's like a beautiful backdrop for a really creepy hand. <laughs> See what I mean? You don't want to draw attention to, you, to the distractions, right? So, oh, this is a good one. Near, near equal ratio of, subject body, of, of subjects' bodies. This is important. Uh, let's say you have the groom standing there, and you have the bride. Can you go behind him and just kind of hug him? from behind. OK. Take, uh, right there's good. And turn to the camera, that one. So people like in a turntable, like a Lazy Susan, just turn your bodies, like keep turning like a, the other way. That way, yeah, OK. So can you guys see that clearly? Mm -hmm. How much of the body do you see of the guy, of Matt? The whole body. The whole body, 100%? Mm -hmm. How much of the body do you see of her? 15. 10%, percent 5 something like that? If you're shooting and you show a tiny little bit of the bride and, this, and everything of the groom, it's going to throw you off visually. All you have to do is step, tell the bride to step to the left a little bit, and the pose becomes a lot nicer. Now her arm is stretching and it's creating a 90 degree on the right side. And because we're here, we're fixing it. So grab the arm, bring it around, and you fix the problem. Does that make sense? Yeah. OK, now you don't have a 90 degree angle. Now you have more of her body, so it's showing up. This much is showing up, and he's showing up this much. It's more equal ratio. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. uh, when you see photos, if you spend hours and hours, like I do, looking at photographs, you start noticing like that ratio is wrong. That ratio is wrong. Like you see a piece of the bride and the whole groom, or a, or even worse, the the whole bride and a piece of the groom, mm -hmm. and it doesn't look very good. Okay. Okay. Part two. Color, the color bones have to be at an angle. Now, this is not a rule. This is just a suggestion that I follow, and I break this rule all the time. Actually, I break these rules when I feel like I need to, uh, but I, these are good guidelines for me. If the color bones are facing the, the camera, you widen, widen the person, right? All you have to do is a little tilt. So if you're the camera, Nikki, a little tilt of the color bones changes the whole perspective of the person. That's it. If I'm standing like this and I'm taking the photo this way, it's just going to look very broad. Unless you're trying to do that photo where the bride and groom are standing next to each other and they're just kind of facing the camera. That's where you break it. Okay? But in general, if you're trying to create finessed photos, you normally want to turn the color bonds to not face the camera. Just a little bit of an angle will do the job. Okay? Shift the body weight is, well, She's doing right now, and he's not. OK, so if you want to, posing starts on the feet, and it goes up. If you shift the body weight, they both look more relaxed, and it looks better. If you have, can you stand again, kiss here, just like totally straight? Just nothing, even drop your arms. It kind of looks like just dead boredom, right? Nothing's going on. Now, look what a quick, just shift your body weight real quick. Look at the hip movement that it creates. So now you go from this, like, skeleton to like this more glamorous looking pose. Then you lean towards the groom without bending the spinal cord. So turn towards him and lean towards him using your whole back. You lean this way and then you can put your arms and get your arms engaged, right? Now that looks good. Now what happens if you do this? Go ahead and pull back. Now lean towards him using your stomach, like actually slouch over. That's what I see all the time. What about that hand? Do you see the origin of that, of the arm? No. no. So, so, Pepe, how many problems do you see here? Uh, at least three. Give me the, the main ones you see. The main ones is uh, the, uh, she's not shifting her body, and then her spinal, spin, uh, spinal cord is not straight. Yeah, it's bent a little bit here. And then I, I can't see the origin of her hand. Of her hand. And, and, and the, and the, the you get arm this, just straight. You get the monkey arm going on. Yeah. Just kind of like sitting there, right? <laughs> OK. Um, create gaps against walls with lower back and elbows. In other words, if you have a wall and you're going to use it, let's pretend there's a wall here. Now what you want to do, let's come this real quick, face the camera this way. You don't want to have the lower back to be flat against the wall. You want the lower back to have a gap. So you basically enhance the, the chest, the bust or whatever. It also creates a little bit of a gap 
in the back. And light can get through that and it makes her look thinner. Same thing with elbows. You, you want to create a gap between elbows and the, and the waist. Because if Kisia is looking at you, Kisia is looking at you this way. Of course, she's got like the perfect waist, but OK. <laughs> right there. You just gave her three inches each side of her body, right? A little bit of, of a gap. Now lights can get through, and it makes her a lot thinner. So when you're posing, you're like, how can I keep track of all this? Well, that's why you have to do it a little bit at a time. Like, bring some friends over and just pose and just concentrate on the gaps of the elbows and the gaps of the lower back. And little by little, it will become second nature to you. Okay? When I'm posing people, these little red flags just come up, and I know exactly where the red flag is. So I just fix it. That's why you can have unlimited poses. Okay? I have a question. Yeah. Uh, about shifting body weight for a man. I know how to shift the body weight for a woman, but how can I shift the body weight for a man without looking feminine? You don't have to, because if the guy is just sitting, let's say you're trying to pose him in front of a wall. If he just shifts his body weight, leans his back against the wall, he's going to look good. Okay. The only problem is in a guy, if the you head. tilt the head towards the high shoulder, you're going to make him look feminine. Yeah. very feminine. I mean, look at this. I'm going to stand this way, right? I'm going to tilt my head towards my lower shoulder. I look like a man. Now I'm going to go like this, and I look very girly. Does that make sense? Yeah. So these are the kinds of structure. This is like the grammar of the English language. This is what I'm talking about. You put all these things into this little grammar, and you can do anything you want. OK? Thank you. One hand higher than the other, avoid mirroring. So let's say they're facing each other. And she's got her arms around his waist. And he's got his arms around her, OK? How many of us have done this pose? Mm -hmm. Like freaking everybody, right? Mm -hmm. If you do this, you're creating a mirror between each other. So the girl is mirroring herself. And it doesn't look very realistic. If you're trying to hug, turn, keep turning and like pivot table, it looks very prom pose. Like you're, it looks very contrived. Like you're trying very hard to just put them together. It looks very forced. To soften it, put one hand, get closer to each other, put one hand higher than the other, and it turns the whole photo around. You see that? Now all you got to do is come, let's keep rotating, put her, put her um, body this way, yep, this way, this way. The reason why I pulled her arm more is so I could see the origin of the, of the hand. If I would have done this, Now you have a perfect backdrop for a creepy hand. Okay? So I pulled her arm just to show a little bit of that wrist. A few inches will do the trick. But look how much more romantic this looks than just stand like a skeleton and hold them together like, like a mirror. Like this is mirroring this side. Okay? Try to create contrasts with the body, with the hands and stuff. So one hand is low, put the other one hand high. One, one, the girl has the hands over his shoulder, the groom has the hands in his pockets. So you have this up and down, up and down thing going on. OK? Thank you, thank you. A oh, question? Yeah. And in this post that you just, you just had here, um, with the hands, it, it worked really good. But I could only see like her face. Do, do all these points, do you have to put them in every post, or can you pick and choose which ones you're working with? These are, these are going to be little pieces of knowledge that you can throw in and implement in poses. There are times when you want to break these rules. Okay. They're not rules. They're guidelines. There okay. are times when you break it. Rarely do I break this because it has been so good for me not to. When I'm, I'm, I've done this a billion times, and like the poses look very, uh, like, just looks like seamless, natural, like a movie still. Like you were watching a romantic movie, and you just push the pause button, and it's, everyone's in their element. And you do that by creating realistic, believable poses. Having the bride go like this is just not realistic, believable. Having the bride go like this and turning his body towards her with the whole back instead of just by slouching, you create a more believable body energy. OK? Symmetrical posing, single person strong. This one right here. So if you want to pose. The guy, this works better for the guy, but you can do it for the, for the bride too. 
Symmetrical posing means everything about them is totally symmetrical. So if his arm is bent this way, this arm needs to, let me your arm. This arm should not be like that. This arm is gonna be doing exactly the same type of thing, okay? Or if you have a bride and she's got a long veil or something, you can have the veil lift up, lift up the veil, and you do it all in a symmetrical way. It looks very strong. And it, it can be a very cool look. So in your brain, you're posing, you're like, I'm gonna do a symmetrical pose. You can turn the, the groom, photograph him against a cool wall with a cool shadow or something, and you can really get a strong structure for him without 90 degree angles, okay? Three point check, single person finessed. That means this. If this is the groom and you're photographing Nikki again from your angle, actually no, I'm gonna do it from my angle since people are watching. Okay, I'm photographing him. Here's what I do. Turn your collarbones that way. So that's one point. Now the collarbones are not facing me all the way, okay? Turn your chin this way. Bring your eyes back to the camera. Now you have a really cool look to him. That's a lot more interesting than just this. Does that make sense? So it's, it's called my, my, my little three-point check. I go collarbones, chin, eyes. They go to a, to a different direction. You can try it with, with uh, Kisia too. Turn your collarbones this way. Turn your chin this way. Turn your eyes this way. Bam, you, you freaking rock it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And you can create all kinds of photos this way. Shift her body weight, which is already done. Her arms are, are not at a 90 degree angle. She starts to look very good. See what I mean? Oh my gosh, okay, this is the hardest one to explain. <laughs> Placement of subjects must be self-explanatory and believable. Let me explain what that means. If, can you guys hug real quick? If you're hugging, does that, is that self-explanatory? Yeah, the explanation is they, they love each other, just got married or whatever. If you're shooting a fashion shoot, you can do like separate yourselves and do just look that way and keep your, so now they're kind of like doing this fashion thing going on, right? Mm -hmm. There's an explanation to it. You can kind of, your reaction as a human, as a human body just reacts and says like, that makes sense to me. They're hugging because they love each other. Mm -hmm. But what happens when the, the bride is like, come take three steps forward, the bride is over here and you're kind of crossing your arms and looking at her, which you know we've all done this post a million times, right? Mm -hmm. Why is he there? Like if he's admiring her, shouldn't he be like with her? Not necessarily. Not necessarily if you want to create depth photos. But that's selective focus and we don't do that. We show the whole thing. Like we show everything. All the context is there. There's no, if I was to crop just the, the heads and I was to focus on her, he will go out of focus, and he can be kind of like a cool, like he's kind of creepy looking at her, you know, kind of cool. <laughs> well, if they love each other, it's not creepy, it's kind of neat. <laughs> to make it less creepy, you could have him turn that way while she's looking at the camera, and he's out of focus. But that creates a feeling that you capture a photojournalistic moment. Like, you just focus on her, and he happened, he happened to be looking over there because he was talking to Uncle Tom. Mm -hmm. So that's believable. But when the guy's just looking at her, with his arms crossed or whatever, and you show everything in the frame, you're removing any mystery and you wonder why is he there? Like, it doesn't make sense.